G'day and welcome to the Ball Boys Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Today, we're going to be doing a real draft, a uh, very unique draft. It is the uh, USA vs. World Fantasy Basketball Draft. Let's go! Jordan, open! Chicago with the lead! Bryant, to Not a game, not a game, not a game. We talking about practice. LeBron James with no record for human life. AD Basketball. Back out to Allen. History title. Curry for three. Wow. Unbelievable. Making it rain in New York. We the North are now we the champions. Not the destination. G'day and welcome again to the Ball Boys Fantasy Basketball Podcast. I am your host, Mitch Casey, and you can find me on Twitter at Ball Boys Fantasy. And like I said today, guys, it is a real draft today, guys. Uh, not a mock draft. This one is a league that we'll be playing in. I think I misspoke at the start of the show. Um, it is not USA versus World. It is actually... The Philippines, I believe, I hope I haven't correct this one. Yeah, the Philippines versus the world. This league is hosted by Puppy Roy, uh, who is uh, all across fantasy basketball. Um, you can check him out um, on Twitter at NBA Fantasy Puppy, P A P I. Um, he is kindly hosting this league. It is a 16 team league um, where it is, it is split a little bit differently. There's eight. Members of the world team, which is my team, and then there are eight members of the Philippines team um, that are going against each other. It is still obviously every team for themselves. The winner of the league will get uh, a prize, but also the member of that team. So if the winner of the league is a member of Team Philippines or a member of the team is Team World. That team will also get a bit of a prize as, this, as well for this one. So a little bit different. And uh, as part of Team World, we've come in with a bit of a strategy. We've basically just come in saying that we're all going to be doing different type of builds so as to not snipe each other. So it's kind of a, I don't know, a bit bit of a friendlier kind of a, a league, I guess, in terms of we're, we're versing each other. But also, as far as my seven other teammates go, trying to, uh, I don't know, I guess, get out of each other's way. Now, hopefully there's no um, <laughs> funny business when it comes to trades and things like that throughout the season, but we'll see how it goes. My, um, I'm picking from pick eight and going into this draft, and I don't normally do this, but for this specific type of league when we're trying to sort of be transparent with the other members of our own team, um, what we are going to be doing, I'm going to be doing a punt big man build. Um so picking from pick eight, I am going to be choosing between either, and unless something falls to me and it's completely different, but I'm going to be picking either LaMelo Ball or Steph Curry, both of which are going much later in drafts. But remember, it's a 16-team league, and I'm going to be punting the Big Ben stats. So those guys in those builds are very, very good. Um, not something, again, I would recommend going into a draft, having a preconceived idea of a, of a, of a team build, and a team strategy, a punt strategy. But for this particular league... It's what we're doing. So that is the strategy. That is the league there. Like I said, it is 16 teams, so a bit deeper than normal. It is being hosted over on Yahoo. So we're going to head over on to the draft right now. Let's bring it up. So this is the draft room here. Uh, I'm going to be drafting from my laptop here. So hopefully it still rolls on into this room here. We've got 44 seconds until the draft starts. Now, being a real draft, I might not be speaking quite as much because I will be concentrating a little bit more than a mock draft. If you guys have ever recorded a podcast and done a mock draft at the same time, it's uh, it's, it's not as um, it's not as easy <laughs> as it uh, as it appears because you know you've got to be thinking about. Lots of different things and also trying not to have a lot of dead air, but there might be a little bit in today's draft. So the things I'm going to have to consider for this one is, especially when I'm punting big man stats, is positional eligibility. So when I'm punting big man, I'm still going to... Oh, there is the sound there. I'm going to turn that off. Go away sound. Um... We, we're going to have to still draft a center. We're still going to have to draft a power forward. It is obviously point guard, small forward, all that sort of good jazz there. 
And we're off and underway. So that is something I'm going to have to consider. All, obviously, if I'm punting all the big man stats, the centers in, in any position are going to be crap, but I'm still going to have to take one. So I'm going to have to pick and choose when I'm going to be doing that. I do have a couple of players that I've pre-planned, one of them being Jabari Smith Jr. He is center eligible on Yahoo. So that will be someone I look at later as a guy to fill my center spot. We're off and firing. What do we got, Anthony Davis? Anthony Davis at four. That was a pre-planned thing. Um, going with the balance build with Anthony Davis, I think, is the strategy there from... from uh, I can't remember who who's there. Um, anyway, I don't know any, everyone's little symbols here. So on the clock at number seven, this should probably be Giannis. Um, that goes here, I would expect... Please, I mean, surely it's not going to be one of my guys. We've got 60 seconds for each pick, a little bit longer than the mock drafts that we've done. And of course, it is 16 teams, so might go a little bit longer than the other mocks. I'm going to crack open my Coke Zero here, get settled in, and uh, we'll see if we can grab LaMelo at pick number one. Starting off a bit risky, but stuff it. That is how we're going to do things in today's draft. Jason Tatum. Oh, okay. Okay. Wow. All right. Looks like we're, we're doing that. I could go, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to disappoint my teammates here and, and mix it up. We do have a few other things going on here. Well, there was anyone punting the free throw percentage. I don't think so. Um, oh, threw me for a loop, but no, we're going <laughs> to keep it wild in the West here. And we're going to go for the mellow ball at pick number eight. I don't think I'd normally do that. Um, although, there's a bit to be said that LaMelo ball could be a top 10 player going into this season. Um, so, a little bit of mind games going into the uh, into the draft here, obviously. A little bit different than most drafts. So, I'll run through the, the, the I guess, the designated... World team, and I can't speak for the, the team Philippines, but for the world team, Kingy at pick number two is going to be punting points and threes, building out of Jokic. Uh, Matty, who was the guy who drafted at um, four, is drafting Anthony Davis. As you saw, he's going for a balanced build. Um, Kayla from Bitches Be Ballin' podcast, one of the greatest uh, podcast <laughs> names out there, in my opinion. Um, she, she picked Tyrese Halliburton at six and is going for a punt points build. I obviously punted, um, I'm punting big man stats, so that's rebounds, field goal percentage, and blocks. Um, some people also punt turnovers. I'm going to be trying to look after my turnovers a little bit throughout this draft, um, just to be a little bit different. So she, uh, oh, that's what I'm doing at eight. DMAC is drafting, um, he said he was drafting Embiid if he dropped, and he did. And he is going what we call a full psycho strategy. So he's going to... Um, He's going to be drafting just some risky players, some risky players, high upside players. So look for him to be drafting Kawhi Leonard, Jimmy Butler, all these kinds of uh, high risk players. Raf is at number 12. He is going what he calls uh, the best player available strategy. So it looks like he went Steph Curry, who I guess was his uh, perceived best player available. Uh, Arik at 14 was hoping to get Steph, but it doesn't look like Steph has made it to him. So he said he was going to be going for a punt assist build. Let's see what he does here. Uh, Donovan Mitchell, I like that as a good point guard in a punt assist build. And then Scott um, at number 16 said he was looking for a punt points build. So he was looking at Chet, KD, and Kyrie as some of the options for him. So all three of those guys are on the board. Let's see what he does. I think Chet would be a good starting point. I'd probably go Kyrie and Chet. Uh, personally, but again, we're doing the playoff week, uh, playoff schedule where the Mavs, I believe, have the two game championship week. So something to consider. So he obviously did go Chet and Kyrie. Yep. So that's what I would have probably done. Um, I'm in the camp that I think KD is probably more of a late second round guy in normal 12 standard team league. So maybe around that 20, 20, 20 to 25 kind of mark. Um, whereas I think Kyrie's better on a per game basis. So we're off and running. So the players I'm going to be looking at on the way round, one of the guys I'm going to want to get is Paul George. Now, the reason I'm going to be wanting to get Paul George is he is power forward eligible. Um, so a player who in my build, I think will be still a top 20 player. 
but to fill out my power forward position is very important because I'm going to be getting a lot of guards in this build. Obviously, if I'm punting big men, the guards are going to be there. So I do need someone to fill out those other positions and I want to get them and not just be token players to fill those positions. So he is going to be one of those guys. Um, another guy that could fall to me is Jalen Brunson. He would suit what I'm trying to do very, very well. Good scoring, assists, uh, free throw percentage is, is awesome. Low turnovers uh, for how many assists he gives. So if he makes it to me as well as Paul George, it will be a tough decision. Because being a 16-team league, I don't think either of them are coming back to me. Um, there goes Kevin Durant at pick number 21. Anthony Edwards at 19. Damian Lillard at 20. Sorry, Damian Lillard at 22. couple picks before me. So, obviously, we're still very early on in this draft. It is a 13-round draft, so a bit one less round than I am used to. But we are going to see. We're going to see. It's a head-to-head, nine-category league, if I didn't mention that before. Standard sort of stuff, but 16 teams, obviously. A little bit more of a wrinkle. Um, Devin Booker. I'm not sure how Devin Booker fits into the all-psycho build, but uh, oh, there goes Jalen Brunson. Okay, at least that decision is taken away from me. So I will be going Paul George here. Like I said, I need... I need that power forward eligibility. Now, I think Yahoo's going to force me to draft into my shooting guard spot, which annoys me a little bit just in terms of keeping track of that sort of shit. Um, But let's go Paul George at pick number 25. I've been getting Paul George in a lot of leagues. Um, I think I'm doing three leagues so far, and I've got Paul George in all three leagues. So... He is one of my guys so far this year. Um, But yeah, in this specific build, the reason I've gone with Paul George is that positional flexibility. I need need to be aware of my power forwards, my forwards, and my centers. A couple of centers that I'm going to be targeting. um, Bam Adebayo is one. If he makes it to me in the second round, uh, the next round, I'm going to have to think about it. Uh, Jaron Jackson Jr. I would have liked, but he's already gone. And then late Jabari Smith Jr. is a guy who is center eligible. Ideally, I'd like two center eligible players, so I don't have blank roster spots at times. Maybe it is going to be someone super late and just a token center. Um, Kristaps Porzingis, but obviously he's injured for a long time. Yeah, the center spot is going to be pretty, pretty rough. Al Horford, for someone who I could get late, he might not be a bad one. Maybe, maybe depending on if Bam comes around, I can snag a, a late Jabari and a late Al Horford. Some people who can give me some solid assists, threes, good free throw percentage, low turnovers for Horford. Actually, Horford's a good... I'll, I'll put him into the, the queue. Not that I'm going to be drafting him anytime soon, but just to make sure I've got those guys in mind, those centers in mind. So I'll, I'll throw you over to... Oh, I'm drafting from a different thing. Okay, so that won't work. So it's it's here. We'll just have to do it this way. All right. Fred Van Vliet goes. He would have been very good in my build. Um, but alas, I needed that forward. I'll get plenty of guards. So, guys, I'm hoping to get back to me. Let's have a look. Is Larry Markin gone? He is not. So he's a guy for me. Um... Kawhi, although I don't want to take on that risk, and I might, I might leave Kawhi for NBA Fantasy Bible to go on his all psycho team. I'll let him, let him get that. Has Tyrese Maxey gone? He's someone for me. Now in this build, it's going to be tight for certain categories. So I'm pretty confident I'm going to be very, very strong in three pointers. Very strong in three pointers. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be very strong in assists. The cutoff categories for me are going to be steals, 
It's going to be scoring and points. And it's going to be free throw percentage, I think. So I want to make sure that I'm very strong in those categories because those are the ones that are probably going to cross over in most other teams. I haven't done... Oh, there goes Tyrese Maxey. Damn you, puppy. Now, it's not a third round reversal, which, I don't know, puppy putting himself at number one. Convenient. <laughs> Convenient. Um... In a 16-team league, I would definitely recommend having a third-round reversal. But we're in Yahoo, so I don't think you can do that, actually, on Yahoo. Someone tell me if, if I'm wrong. I, I don't think we can do that in Yahoo. I think that's just a fan track thing. This is, my, this is my first and probably only Yahoo league this year. I haven't actually done a Yahoo league in a while. Um, interesting, going with a punt point strategy, Kingy, and then drafting Zion Williamson. It's an interesting strategy. I would have gone Mobley in that situation, personally. But Zion, I have Zion in one league. And I'm excited to see how he goes. I'm actually Zion in a Roto League. Um, I don't know, which I haven't ever done before. There goes Larry Marketing. Okay. So some of my targets going here. What pick is going to be my pick? It's going to be pick 40. Emmanuel Quickly is going to be a guy there for me. It's early, but... Or a Darius Garland. Actually, oh, if Cade Cunningham makes it to me, I'm, I'm taking Cade. That is going to be my guy. Yeah, I'm going to have to take Cade if he makes it to me. That's who I want. Cade or... All the turnovers for Cade. Emmanuel quickly. Cade. Desmond Bain could be interesting. DeJounte Murray. There's a few good options still here. Derek White goes. Jason Tatum. Jaron Jackson Jr. He could take Cade here. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. I think I want Cade. Just seems like the highest upside kind of a player here. Um, he looked good the other day too. He did. I think this could be his year. I know we've been saying it for the last couple of years, but I think it might finally happen with the Tobias Harris edition, some more shooting. Miles Turner. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, Cade Cunningham. He's shoot, shooting guard eligible. Welcome to the Ball Boys International. That's the team name. Ball Boys International. Mr. Worldwide. All right, here we go. Kay Cunningham, welcome to the squad. All the uh, all the centers that I was looking for, they're gone. Um, where did Bam, Bam went? Bam went at what pick? Where did Bam go? Pick 37. So, yeah, none of those centers made it back to me. So... We're going to be hoping for some late centers. Jabari Smith and Al Horford. So I've got a point guard. I've got a shooting guard. Well, I've actually got two shooting guards. Lamelo's a shooting guard eligible as well. Cade and Lamelo both dual position. Paul George can be the small forward or power forward and shooting guard. He's got three positions in Yahoo. All right, so far so good. I like, I like the team. Few players. I've got Cade in a couple of spots as well. Scoring is good. Assists are very good. Um, turnovers are probably a little high. If I'm going to be considering that, look, I'm not. I'm not. Normally, I would really just punt turnovers in this build, but I'm, I'm trying to do something a little bit different because. Again, you just leave yourself with very little room to manoeuvre when you punt four categories. And I'm punting three, but... And, and turnovers I'll value a little bit less than the others, but I don't, I don't want to, when it's tie-breaking situation, I'll consider it. But I think the first few guys, I just want those, those counting stats. Maybe a bit later, I'll start to hone in and, and draft some guys who... Maybe look after the ball a bit more. 
So all those other guys went. DeJounte, Desmond Bain, Emmanuel Quickly went the pick after me. Jalen Brunson, Emmanuel Quickly on the Giannis team. That's interesting. That's very interesting. Not something I would do. But, interesting to see how it will go. Interesting to see how it will go. How's the full psycho team going? Oh, yes, he went Jimmy Butler. Perfect, perfect. That's that's interesting that that NBA Fantasy Bible went Jimmy Butler before Kawhi. Kawhi, I would still say, has the better overall upside. But maybe he's gone half psycho. I don't know. <laughs> Is that as a half psycho kind of move, not a full psycho move? <laughs> Calling you out, mate. Back your psycho in. Um, all right. So yeah, teams looking strong in points, very strong in threes, very strong in steals and assists. Free throw percentage is solid, sitting oh, solid. It's very solid at 86%, but we have plenty of time for that to come down. Um, turnovers are bad. Turnovers are bad. So we want to make sure we continue to shape out some of our forward positions. So Mikhail Bridges is going to be someone that we're going to want to have a look at here. He didn't just go, did he? No. Where is he? Mikhail Bridges. Tobias Harris is going to be someone we want to have a look at. Who else? Trey Murphy maybe later. Jordan Poole maybe later. Actually, Darius Garland would be a big one for me. It's Garland. Let's have a look at Garland. Did he go? Oh, shit, he went. Fuck. Okay. Damn it. Got to update, I think. All right. So what are we at? Pick 55. I think Mikhail Bridges might be someone for me. Um, just to get that good turning over with threes, scoring, a little bit of assists, Good free throws and low turnovers. I think he might be a guy here, unless... Hmm. And he feels... Actually, he's power forward eligible, which is important. That is important. Yeah, I think we're going to go Mikhail Bridges here. And hopefully, we don't care about his field goal percentage. We don't care about the fact that he doesn't get any rebounds. We're going to do that. We're going to go Mikhail Bridges. All right, so we've got two power forwards. Actually, he's the shooting guard, small forward, power forward, eligible, which is great for my flexibility. I think in this type of a build, that flexibility is more valuable than normal um, just to get bulk volume of lineups out there. Um, my free throws are going to be so strong. Um, okay. Points and steals are going to be big, big, big time. I think those are going to be the big time stats. Threes, I'm going to walk into threes. Free throws are going to be strong, so let's not worry as much about those. So what I'm doing, guys, and I'll give a free plug to Basketball Monster. I'm using, whilst I'm drafting this one, I'm using Basketball Monster's draft tracker. I've put in some of my own projections, some custom projections in there, which everyone can do. But the great feature that they have there is in the draft tracker, and this is just what I do. You can you can do this or you can not. Um, but I chuck in, um, I punt the categories I'm punting, obviously, but then I also put some weightings based on what I'm looking for. So right now, I've got a 1.2 weighting to points. I've got a 1.2 weighting to steals. I've got a 0.8 weighting to threes because I think I'm going to come by that super, super easily. Um, and I've got a 0.9 weighting to free throw percentage because, again, my free throws are so strong already um, that I'm not too stressed about it. So that's what I do. Um, and I'm doing that based on what I know correlates well with the categories I'm punting. So I, I know that by punting the big man stats, my threes are going to be so strong um, 
But I also know that everyone loves scoring. Everyone loves getting players that get a lot of points and steals. Whilst, and I know Josh talks about this on his show and, and others have talked about it as well. It's a very variable stat. It's the most uh, up and down week to week. So I'm going to need a decent buffer um, is my th- rationale. I know some people will go the other way and down weight it. I actually increase the weighting on it because I want to, even on the off weeks, still be strong in it. And, and I want to have that buffer. Um, so that's, that's my strategy. Is it right? I don't know. It's worked for me in the past. It's worked for me in the past. Because people who steal the ball, whilst maybe they, they don't steal it as much every week, they usually at least are still decent. You know, like most weeks you're going to get some steals. And at the end of the day, like all, all stats, like it's all variable. Players get injured and we have to understand a lot of this is just out of our control, right? So if variance gets me, variance gets me. But if I can build up as much of a buffer as I can, I'm pretty happy. So far, the standings have me a middle pack. I lose to a few teams ahead of me. M- NBA Fantasy Bible picking right after me. He, oh, he obviously <laughs> projects really well, but um, Joel Embiid, Jimmy Butler, like he, he's going to project well in the standings, but he's obviously drafting with some risk. So he's the team that beats me fairly comfortably. And Fantasy Basketball Crew, I'm not sure, again, based on these logos, who, who that is, but... They are looking like they're doing pretty well. Fantasy Basketball Crew. Who's that? Fantasy Basketball. Oh, I think they're the team picking right in front of me. Yes. So the Giannis team. Okay. All right. The Giannis team seems to dominate me. Interesting. So he's got me in points and assists. He's got me in points by a fair bit. So his points are very... Yeah, okay. Giannis quickly. So Jakob, Jalen Brunson. Yeah, okay. All right. So yeah, that's that points. And the thing is, like, I, I basically have to be the best point scoring team in the comp or have better turnovers. I'm kind of trading one for one there. So who do I want to come back around to me? Jordan Poole is going to be coming into consideration now. Um, definitely. Trey Murphy's going to be one, but I think I might be able to wait another round for him. Zach Levine is there, although I've got Zach Levine in a lot of places. I might look elsewhere than Zach. So I think Jordan Poole's going to be the guy here if he makes it to me. And that'd be three guards on my team. So yeah, I think I'm after pool. Um, Brandon Miller might also be someone to have a look at. Drew Holiday, 70. Brandon Miller, Zach Levine. Okay. Come on, don't take Jordan. It doesn't seem like he's kind of a player. If you go on Jason Tatum, you're kind of playing it safe. You got Tatum at seven. You're not going to take Poole in the 70s. That's not this kind of guys. Sports. Sports. Mario. Oh, I don't even know what that is. Sports Mario Sep. Come on. You want. You want. Brandon Miller here. That's who you're going to take. You're going to take Brandon Miller. Come on. Oh, he's going to auto pick. Oh, you motherfucker. Oh, whoa. Wow. You would do that. Okay. Writing it down to the last second. Oh, that's annoying. That is very, very, very annoying. Oh. Fuck. Okay. All right. Regroup. 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 Ugh. That's frustrating. Oh, Brandon Miller. He's small forward eligible. Oh, I can't go Zach Levine again. I feel like I've got too much Zach Levine. Do I believe in Brandon Miller? Him and Lamelo together. 
All right, I'm going to do it. I don't love that pick. Fuck me. Jordan Poole. Ah, frustrating, frustrating, frustrating. So, and Zach Levine goes one after. I hate this spot in the draft as well. I mean, Brandon Miller normally goes a little bit earlier than that. So, at 72, I think it's okay. But, geez, that's annoying. Okay. I mean, I think he's had a few good games in the preseason. It's only round five. It's going to be deep. It's going to be deep. All right, I'm going to have to start to consider getting my first center. So, I think Jabari Smith, when will my next pick be? My next pick will be a pick 89. I can't risk that not getting to me. So I'm going to have to go with my next pick, Jabari Smith. He's ranked at 93 on Yahoo. So if I'm going to be picking 89, I can't leave that later. I have to get him. I have to get that center on my on my team because otherwise the centers are just useless to me. So I need, I need Jabari Smith to get it back to me. And I know saying that right now, he will now not. <laughs> he, he, he won't make it back to me. Um, Oh, that Jordan Poole thing was annoying. Fuck. Okay. And it was the other... We've got a bit of a chat going. That is very annoying. Who else? Is anyone else punting the field goal percent in our team world? I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> okay. Trey Murphy. Oh, he would have been good on my team too. He would have been good on my team just with the turnovers. Scoring a little bit less than a, than a Brandon Miller. Um, but Brandon's, he's, he's not too bad on the turnovers too. So hopefully it's good. I just don't know how to, how to view Brandon Miller. I know he was good for his rookie season, but Lamella Ball coming back in, how much does that help or hurt? Not 100%. Not 100% sure. Keegan Murray goes. Okay. All right, so I'm back up there in terms of the, the team standings. Kayla's cool team has got me an assist. My assists probably need to, to be addressed because I went the Macau Bridges, Brandon Miller early and Paul George. So for a punt big man team, my assists probably need to be a little bit better. They probably do need to be a bit stronger. I'm not obviously going to address that with my Jabari Smith pick. Hopefully I'll get a late round assist guy in the next round. What have I got? Like six picks until me. Hopefully you can last that long. He's not right up the top of the list here, so hopefully he can slide on by. Some late round assists, guys. We'd be looking at someone like... Hmm. Chris Paul's the obvious one. Suggs. CJ McCollum. Although he probably wouldn't make it back. Mike Conley will be a good late one, actually. Hopefully he goes under the radar. Zubats goes. Okay, leave me Jabari. Come on, leave me Jabari. I need that center. Fuck! Oh, no. All right, my, my plan is up in flames. All right. Well, then I'm going to have to get... Oh, shit. Shit, shit, shit. Okay. Regroup. Sorry. Lots more swearing in this... <laughs> In this episode, it always happens uh, when I do an actual draft. Uh, shit, 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 shit. Oh, who was that? Hmm. That's 
Kayla, right? That's one of my teammates. Got me. Bitches be balling, right? Oh, man. All right. Well, it's too, is it, it's too early for Horford, right? It's too early for Horford, so I'm going to have to wait another round for Al Horford. And that's the risk with this type of a build. Fuck. Okay. So, what I'm going to have to try and do here is get some more scoring, some more assists. What about an Anthony Simons? Anthony Simons. He would have to be a guy for me here. Mm, it's my pick. Suggs would have been a guy for me. I'm going to go Anthony Simons, I think, here. Hurts my steals, but that's something I can get late, I think. And if I'm going to draft Horford, I'm going to have to make up his scoring. So, yeah, let's go Anthony Simons here. Uh, pick 89. Don't mind it. My threes are just so strong. No one's going to touch me in threes. I picked him for the same reason. Did Raf get him? Where's Raf? Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. Okay. It's all good. It's all good. It's a deep league, so if my centers are spud, my centers are spud. I need at least one center that can contribute some kind of guard stats. Jabari's got a bit of bust wrist anyway. So, I the, the balance is trying to reach... Is, is not to reach too much. Still extracts comes like because if I if I got Jabari Smith where I got Brandon Miller, like it just I'm already sacrificing in my build. Like Jabari's helping me in threes and free throw percentage and, and he doesn't turn the ball over much. He's he's an okay steals guy for a sense eligible player. Like he's not giving me assists. He's not scoring a whole lot. And the threes I'm getting I'm already super strong in them anyway. So it's like it's not it's not actually that helpful for me. I just I obviously just need to fill that center spot. Like I can't just have no one there. Alright. So my next pick is gonna have to be Al Horford. My next pick is at 104. I don't think Al Horford normally goes that far. So I go 104 then 121. Oh can I push <laughs> can I push Al Horford to 121? What is he ranked here on Yahoo? Al Horford. He's ranked 127. It'd be too risky, I think, to push him to 127. To 121. Is anyone doing a boring team? Is anyone... Is there... No, no one's doing an all boring team. Like, he wouldn't get sniped from me by Fantasy Bible. I, Al Horford doesn't fit his MO. Although there's a few punt pointers. Like Scott. Scott here. He, that would be prime Al Horford zone. Right here. Punting points. So, I'm going to have to do it. It's early, but I need that center. I need that center. So, it's going to have to be Al Horford. Or well, Chris Aspelzingis. He hasn't gone yet. I mean, obviously, he doesn't help me f for the start of the year, but... The other thing I think about this league is it's actually a very tight playoff race. I think of a 16-team league, and I'll, I'll have to confirm this. I'm going to check with the chat. Because that would change my decision here. Because that's, that's pretty rough. Six teams in the playoff from a 16-team league. You, you can't... I, I can't be messing around with Chris Stapps in that position. Plus, it's a deeper league, so getting him now means the guy I'm replacing him in, it's going to be way worse. So I actually think... It, no, I can't. 
Yeah, it is six teams. Fuck, that's tight. And, <laughs> and for my build here, because I'm obviously punting hard, that's going to be very hard for me to make. I would not normally do this. I'm probably just kissing money away. Um, yeah, that's going to be tough for me to make. Six teams, top six teams. Jesus, because I'm winning 5-4 every week, if that. Oh, well. We're doing it for the team, right? Doing it for the team. So, yeah. Well, I mean, I'm projected to do all right against most teams. But, yeah, it's five fours. Assists and steals. Oh, what I'm going to need. Is Chris Paul gone? No. No, it has not. No, he has not. I thought Kingy was punting points. What happened there, Kingy? You drafted Cam Thomas? Kaminga? Sexton? Kingy. You're deceiving people. I'm going to call him out on here. All right, it's coming up to me. It's going to have to be... It's going to have to be Al Horford. It's the most boring pick in the world. But it's happening. It is happening. Crusoe wouldn't be a bad pick for me either here. With his assistant steals. Low turnovers. Well, I need that centre, man. I just need that bloody centre. Like in my build, he's ranked 136th. This is pick 104, so I'm losing like 30 rounds of value, but He's the only guy that's going to get close to this value as a center. Well, Nas Reed is actually a good one. I might be able to get him in a couple of rounds. And then just piss off centers altogether. All right, let's go Al Horford. I need that center eligible player. And of course, Yahoo puts, me, puts him in my power forward slot. That drives me nuts. Um, all right. Let's put some players in the queue. Chris Paul is going to go in the queue. Um, Tyus Jones is going to go in the queue. Keontae George is going to go in there. We're going to want Mike Conley in there, definitely. Marcus Smart, Malik Monk. We're going to want um, Jordan Clarkson. We're going to want Scoot Henderson. Oh, Alex Sars not center eligible. That's annoying. Surely he'll pick it up. Oh, Chris Paul went. Fuck. Anthony Melton we're going to put in the queue. We're going to put... Who else? Stefan Castle is a later round flyer. These deep leagues, man. They get tricky. They do get tricky. I'll oh, put Trey Jones in there. Hmm. All 
Right, 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 right. So yeah, I don't love that pick. It's not good. It's not a good pick. But I have to get that center. I have to get that center. I couldn't take Kristaps Porzingis because six teams make the playoffs. Out of 16, 10 people won't. And I'm already disadvantaged with my punt build. So now we're just going to pick off the value plays. We've got the positions in order. I've got a starting team, nearly. Um, I've got my center. I've got a couple power forwards. Got a small forward. Got a few guards. So we can go hard on the guards now. We can go hard on the guards. Who am I hoping gets back to me? I mean, we're still... What round are we up to? Round eight. Like, we're still definitely in our starting team. So we it's different when you go a bit, bit deeper. So I, I think a Mike Conley might be a kind of guy for me. Looking at a bit of a Mike Conley. Um, what are the categories where I can work a little bit with? It's a cis. Yeah, it's a cis and steals for the most part. Threes, I beat everyone. So I'm, I'm actually going to punt the threes just to go back to what I was talking about before. My free throw percentage is still pretty strong, so don't have to worry too much about that. Let's refresh that. So, yeah, so the top three guys here that I'm looking at are Marcus Smart, Anthony Melton, and Mike Conley. I think I'd be happy with any of those players. What do we think? Which one do we like the most? I think Melton I'm going to put to the bottom of that list. His role is the most up in the air. So what do we think? Mike Conley or Marcus Smart? Mike Conley or Marcus Smart? Can't say George goes. Hmm. Mike Conley or Marcus Smart? How close? So Smart's probably going to give me more steals. Conley more assists. My assists are probably in a better position than my steals are. So maybe Marcus Smart's the guy. Although, could I get steals more later? I probably could. Could my Conley fall a little bit? Like, is there a chance that they're both ranked around a similar spot? This is just me talking to myself. Um, riveting podcasting. Hmm. Mike Conley or Marcus Smart? Mike Conley or Marcus Smart? Which of the teams I'm losing to? Steals. I think I'm going to go... Conley because the assists are going to be harder to find. Is he still going to start? He's 37. Fuck. Like he's bloody old. Let's go, Conley. Hmm. Let's go, Conley. I think those assists are harder to do later. That's my reasoning. That is my reasoning for going Conley at 121. And again, deep league, we're round eight. I mean, the smart is still there. I'll still go him. Chris Middleton's still there. How is Chris Middleton still there? He would definitely be... And Marcus Smart goes immediately after. Okay. So there's that. There's that. Is this guy doing the same kind of shit as me? I think he is. I think he's doing the same thing as me. Which is annoying. It is annoying. 
Tyson Daniels, 125. Now, considering, like, if this was a 12-team league, I'd be taking much more exciting players. Just just be, maybe be super clear on that. Going Al Horford and Mike Conley in back-to-back rows in, in the hundreds. It's not what I would do in a 12-team league. But in a 16-team league, I need steady production. I need reliable guys. And in my build, they are, well, especially Mike Conley and Al Horford with the center stuff, they are better than this. They're much better than this. Andy Nemhard is a guy I could look at. Absolutely, I could look at Andy Nemhard. TJ McConnell. Absolutely. Is Jeremy Grant still there? Is someone taking Jeremy Grant? Jeez. I could have a look at Jeremy Grant as a power forward guy. That could be a good shout, I think. His steals have been dropping away recently, year after year. Scoot. All right, let's have a refresh of the standings now that that round is down. Mm. Points are back down a bit. Okay, okay. Dante DiVincenzo, Andre Drummond. Interesting. Andrew Nemhard's an interesting one, and D'Anthony Melton, actually. I was considering him before, so he might be someone that I go for. This is where I'm loading up on these guards. I don't want to have too many, but... Hmm. KCP is a boring sort of type in this sort of zone. Malik Monk. Oh, there goes Andy Nemhard. So D'Anthony Melton's the guy I'm going to want to get to me. Chris Middleton and Jeremy Grant are still there. Maybe I should look at one of those for the small forwardness, power forwardness. Yeah, those are the guys. Okay, let's... Chris Middleton, Jeremy... Jeremy Grant. Those are the dudes. Actually, I think I'll lean more towards those forward players. All right, I'm going to get one of them. So who would I... I think... I think Chris Middleton. Like, fuck me, at a 136. Is there any word about him? Why has he fallen so... I know he's been injured... I, heard, I think I heard something that he's going to be playing preseason games, which Chris Milton playing preseason games. There goes Malik Monk. Uh, da, 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 da. Is he out? It's my turn. I've got 41 seconds. What's the news on Chris Middleton? Or Jeremy Grant. No, let's let's go Chris Middleton, I think. Oh. Yeah. No, let's go Chris Middleton. Chris Middleton at 136, I think's good value. Man, I'm getting boring and old in, in these days. Like, I feel like 
I used to be exciting. <laughs> That's depressing. I used to be exciting, but now I'm drafting Al Horford, Mike Conley, and Chris Middleton in three consecutive rounds. What the fuck has happened to me? What has happened to me? I, I might as well just sign up to the old man squad network. Fucking hell. But that's good value, man. Has to be. Has to be. Okay. So do I have to... Do I need a second center, really? It's a shallow bench league. Horford is going to miss time, miss games. So I probably do. Who did I say before? I said... Um, who did I say before? Nas. Nas Reed. Is, has he gone? Oh, he must have. Haven't been watching very closely. Drops at 107th. Oh, he went fucking ages ago. Jesus. Oh, yeah, he went two picks, after, three picks after Horford went. There goes Melton. At 140, that's great value. That's great value for Anthony Melton. Jeremy Grant's still being there. Jesus, he's at the top of the list too. Aaron Gordon goes. There goes Jeremy Grant. Jaden McDaniels. Kelly Olynyk in Toronto. He's someone that could be sent eligible. Yeah, don't know. All right, so we are getting into what are we in round ten now? So final round for our um, for our starting squad. So this is where we can start to be a bit more upsidey focused. Again, I'm sorry if this is a boring podcast, and it probably is, but. It is what it is. It is what it is. All right, who am I looking at coming back around? Who am I looking at? Um, oh, geez, the names on here I don't love. Jeremy Sohan. Shaden Sharp's injured, isn't he? What's his deal? Oh, this is gross at this point in the draft. A 16-teamer. It is gross. Reed Shepard. Trey Jones. It'll be good when Chris Paul's out, obviously. He's not going to score. Gary Trent. I don't need his threes. Do you need his steals? But steals... I don't know where to go here next. I think I need some upside. What about a Bilal Kulabali or a Vince Williams? Bilal is forward eligible. Bilal could be a guy here. 
I think I like a bit of upside here. There goes Stefan Castle. I don't mind Stefan Castle. I know some people are, were down on him in his draft year. I, I actually liked him. Oh, there goes Blow. Anyway, okay. Nope. Thought so much for that plan. Um, Aod Sumnu. Zach Levine coming back. Ooh. TJ. Oh, it's coming up to me. Oh, I don't like any of these any of these guys on the board. I don't like any of them. I really don't know where I'm going here. I'm next though. Could Vince Williams be a guy? Dylan Wright is sitting on the top of the uh, Basel Monster projected value, but I don't, I don't think I like that. Gary Trent. Okay, it's my pick. Fuck, and I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. Lou Dort. Ugh. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing here. I really don't. Um. Jesus. Assists are very strong. Um, shit. Fuck it, let's go Trey Jones. Oh, I didn't love it. Trey Jones. Who else, though? Is Hummy Huckers someone to consider? Hummy Huckers. Karis Levert. Um, I like Vince Williams. He's going to go in my queue. TJ McConnell. That was a panic pick, that, that Jones pick. Don't love it. Um, yeah. Bob Carrington? Um, Ma- Malcolm Brogdon's out to start the year, I think, right? He could be a flyer. Miles McBride? There's no depth. Mm, Jesus, it's dire. What are we at? 150-something. Jordan Clarkson, he's he's steady. Points. He's small forward eligible, actually. That's useful. Maybe he's someone I should consider a bit more closely. All right. Tight part of the draft. Yeah. 
But also, once has my turnovers, it's horrible. I've still even tried to look after them. Jesus. Um, not good. Not good. My free throws are sitting at 86%. Jesus. So I don't obviously need to care about that. I'll punt that now. Points, assists, and steals. That's what I'm after. Points, assists, and steals. So Karis LeVert actually comes out as a guy to, to target, which makes sense. Westbrook actually comes out as a guy here. All right, well, let's... Levert's going to go to the top of my queue. He's small forward eligible. That's good. Jordan Clarkson is going to be up the top there. Vince Williams, what's, what's his deal? Where would he be at? You'd have to be someone I'd consider. Bit of upside. Scoring. I need the scoring. All right. Uh, Tyree Easton's actually a good pick here. That's a good upside. 162. Isaac. I haven't been focusing on other teams selecting really much at all here. So I'm just figuring out what I'm doing. Ada Sumnu at 164. According to Basketball Monsters projections, Scott Keller, day to day, and Kingy are the top three teams. I'm projected to be sixth at the moment, just scraping into those playoffs. Um, but it's I'm five four versus everyone, <laughs> except for one team. Three arrows capital, I beat six three because I get him in turnovers. Um, but yeah, it's it's gonna be. It's going to be tight to make the playoffs in this league. And um, on the days or weeks that Al Horford sits, I'm going to be playing with a handball tied behind my back when it comes to centre-eligible players. Like, is there even a centre left? Brandon Clark. He looked all right. Ooh, Nikola Jovic is sent eligible. That's interesting. That's someone I could chuck on the list, actually. Nikola Jovic. He did some things recently, I'm pretty sure. Did he start recently? I, I want to say he started in their last game. Nikola Jovic. Actually, he is going to be a good late round flyer for me. Um, I've still got three rounds to go. Okay. Let's lock in. Oh, does someone take Levert? Fuck. That's annoying. Should I just take Jordan Clarkson? Is it a flyer type? I mean, damn. Damn. Let's do Jordan Clarkson. Let's do that. God, my free throws are strong. <laughs> I'm going to shoot 90%. I probably need at least one more steals guy. I do need another steals guy. Um, who can be my steals guy? What do we think about Dillon Wright? 
Oh, there goes TJ. He was someone I'd look at. Vince Williams, he could be a steals guy. Surely, why well, is basketball once have got him projected at 0.9 steals? Surely he averaged more steals than that when he started. What does he do? He did have some good steals games. Some zeros in there, though. He's expected to miss sideline through the first week with a stress reaction in his left shin. Okay, that's not good. That is not good. Okay, I think I can leave him. He could be a guy that we pick up. That's good to know. All right, that's good to know. Did someone take Jovic? I think Jovic is going to be... Oh, he's right down there. 313. What's the go with Nikola Jovic? When did the Heat play last? Are they play right now? I think he started. If memory serves. Surely they have played recently, haven't they? Maybe not for a while. They played on the 8th. And Jovic did start. 9, 2 and 3 with a steal. Jim Butler was there. Rozier was there. So they didn't have Hero. They didn't have Harkes. Would they start Harkes over him? I'm not sure. Let's go. Let's go him for the for the position. And would you can just see. It, it might be a guy that we drop, but I think he is gonna be a guy for me. And usually this is where I ignore the, the standings and stuff, right? These last couple of picks, we're going upside, we're going flyers. I think Jovic has some. Some upside. So let's go him here. Right now he's sitting as my starting center. And then we've got one more player to finish it all out with. And it probably needs to be another steals guy. Color where went. Deuce McBride. Mm. Trey Mann. Matisse Thibault. <laughs> Delon Wright keeps showing up as the the dude here. I think I think it I think it could be him. I think DeLon Wright, if he makes it to me, will be my dude here. Milwaukee. Does he get minutes in Milwaukee? What's Milwaukee's depth chart looking like? He won't start, but can he play like 22 to 25 minutes? Backup guard. I don't have many other options. No, they don't have really any other options, really. Pat Connaughton, no. So, yeah, okay. All right, Dylan Wright will be the guy if he comes back around. Um, Carlton Carrington, Bob Carrington is also someone we could have a look at. Um, so those would be guys that we'd have a look at. In this interesting, interesting, interesting draft.
Let me know what you think, guys. What, what do you think? If you've stuck around, good on you, because this has probably been the most boring podcast I've put up this year. Um, but if you stuck around, what do you think of the team? Uh, obviously, I've gone a very specific build, very specific strategy, trying to play well with my teammates and not snipe people. Um, so, not how I would normally approach this draft, but it's been a bit of fun. Obviously, there's Bob Carrington. He goes, obviously, I'm going to be so strong in threes, free throws, assists are going to be very dominant. Um, my points and steals, like I sort of said from the start, that's that's where it's going to come down to. I mean, my points are strong. They're definitely strong. I'm probably averaging close to, in a 16-team league, I'm probably averaging close to 17 points a night. And that's with me drafting Al Horford at bloody pick 107. Um so I've got a lot of scoring. Is it enough? I don't know. There's some strong scoring teams out there that probably do get me. Um, yeah, fantasy basketball crew. He's 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 got me beat. Who's that? Is that is this fantasy basketball crew? That guy. He's probably got me beat there. Yeah, the Giannis team. Oof. There is a few injury spots in this one here, but in a deep league, I don't want to rely on them. At the start of the year, I try to get a healthy team out of the gates because I have a lot of old men in this team. So I am going to be using those spots a lot. Chris Middleton, Mike Conley, and Al Horford are going to be there a fair bit. And hopefully not Lamello Ball. Hopefully not Lamello. All right, let's wrap this up. Three picks till me. Oh no, did someone go? My dude? Did someone go to Long Right? Why has he disappeared from my Oh no. He wasn't in my queue. Alright, so Delon Wright's gonna be my guy here. I I don't think people will draft him. Um because he's ranked at two hundred and forty two, even though we are coming up to pick two hundred, which will be my selection at pick two hundred. Um He's going to be my dude here for the steals. And we are going to get out of here. Cam Whitmore actually would be... What about Cam Whitmore? Do I see he started? Hmm. All right, one more to my pick. One more to my pick. All right, yep. Kaishon George, Washington. I think he's got some stars too. That's been one of the more random names starting. Uh, all right. Delon Wright. Let's get you in there. Get some steals going. I need those steals. And that is the squad. That is the squad. So... Just to revise, the most boring podcast of all time. Lamella Ball at number one, early, pick eight, but we had the build in mind. Paul George fills up one of those very important power forward eligible spots. Kay Cunningham, I liked getting him at 37. Mikael Bridges, um, solid. Maybe an in vain attempt to keep my turnovers low. Yeah, probably definitely in hand. I wish I got that Jordan Poole pick, but... So be it. Anthony Simons. I didn't love the Anthony Simons pick, but then again, not too many players I would have gone otherwise. Al Horford, the question remains, could I have got Al Horford here? And instead of getting an Al Horford, could I have got someone like a Chris Paul? Could I have got someone like a Tyus Jones, um, a Josh Hart, a Keontae George, or something like that instead? Maybe. Um, the Marcus Smart versus Mike Conley decision... Reflecting now, my steals are probably weaker than my assists are. So, 
we'll have to consider that. Yeah, my assists are stupid strong. So, reflecting and going back, maybe I would have flipped that decision. But we'll see. We'll see. Maybe we can get on the trade market. Maybe we can make some moves and do some negotiations and see what comes around. And uh, we can get some stronger steals and points, sacrifice some free throw percentage and, and assists, potentially some threes, which are just so far beyond anything. Probably should have weighted those threes and assists down even further. Because so I've weighted them down and I still am just unnecessarily strong in those categories. Um, like I'm sitting at 85, 86% free throws. The next closest to me, according to Barcelona's projection, is 83%. Like I'm so strong in that category. Um, assists, I'm looking at averaging 4.8 assists per game. In a 16-team league, That's that's crazy. I'm projected to average 2.3, 2.4 threes per game. The next closest is someone who's going to be averaging 1.9. So I'm over half a three game per game better than the next best. So that's that's unnecessary. So again, a little bit of a lesson again, just to go and remember that it doesn't. You don't need to be so dominant. It's a bit of waste um, in in that kind of a draft, but. That is it. We'll see how we go. We'll see how the season plays out. The final projection from Basketball Monster, which is kind of irrelevant after the last few rounds, has me sitting at... Where does it have me sitting at? Middle of the pack. I beat nearly every team 5-4, but I lose to Day to Day 3-6. I lose to Kingy 5-4, Fantasy Bible 5-4, and Basketball Crew 5-4, or 4-5, I should say. So I lose to four teams. I beat everyone else. But because of the fact that I only beat everyone else 5-4, it has me down in the standings underneath that playoff marker. So I'm going to have to get up there and beat the teams that I'm losing to. And for all of them, it's the points category. They all beat me in scoring. I only beat one of them in turnovers, which is Kingy. But he also destroys me in steals. His steals are so far ahead of mine. So, Yeah. That is interesting. That is interesting. So I'll have to see how it all plays out. And again, everything can change. The projections are one thing. We'll see how it actually goes down in the actual season. So thank you very much, guys. I appreciate that this was a very boring episode because I spent a lot of time just talking a bunch of shit and it was a long draft. And obviously, when I'm doing an actual draft, I'm not going to talk as much. But if you made it to the end, drop down some comments. Let us know uh, that Dillon Wright is the GOAT. Let us know. Put some goat emojis or deal on rights names in the comment section if you made it this far because you are a legend if you held on this long on this type of a podcast. But uh, we will have some more uh, sleepers and players I like coming up next week. Um, I do have the auction draft for the industry pickup league coming up. Not sure if I'll record that one, but if I do, I'll let you know. And until next time, see you then. Bye.